Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Trident Talks. I'm Josh, the Recruitment Director here at Trident and I'm very excited today to say that we're joined by the none other than Oz Alashi, Chief Exec of CyberSafe. Oz, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hey Josh, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. You're very welcome. So Oz, I know you very well, but uh, for those that don't know you so well, can you sort of give us a bit of background of who you are, how you got to where you are today? Um, that'd be really great. Thanks. Yeah, it's a shame that we know each other so well, Josh, because uh, I, mean, I, I can't lie. I can't. I can't uh, twist this. Thing, but um, yeah, as you as you described, my name is Ozalashe. I'm the chief exec and founder at CyberSafe. Um, and prior to that, uh, I was a army officer. Um, I commissioned into the parachute regiment again. No jokes from you, Josh. Um, <laughs> I served uh, uh, for a, for a, I was going to say a short period of time. Actually, I ended up serving for seventeen years retiring as a lieutenant colonel um, after an incredible career surrounded by amazing people getting to do some really extraordinary things. So um, I'm delighted now because uh, having retired five years ago, I um, joined some friends who had recently started a company and um, I learned a fair bit about what they were doing um, and we grew that company. Um, but I identified a, a challenge within cybersecurity um, that I'm really passionate about and that's the human aspect of cybersecurity. So that's what I'm doing right now. Awesome, awesome. And so as you said, Chief Exec of CyberSafe. Who are CyberSafe? Well, I suppose what's your role as Chief Exec in that? Again, you guys have a good social presence, so I'm pretty sure most of our listeners and viewers will will know who you are, but just give us an in-depth, I suppose, overview really of what the services you offer, what's the software as a service platform, and what's the purpose of it? So we are... Um a cybersecurity uh, and data analytics company, actually. That's the way we describe ourselves because that really um, encapsulates our focus. And as you've described, we're a software company. We build a software platform that helps organizations measure, understand, and reduce human cyber risk. And for those who don't know, human cyber risk boils down into two sides, those people who make technology and those people who use it, which, of course, is by far the majority of society. We don't focus on those people who make it, so we're not looking at secure coding or secure app development, and we are looking at um, users of technology, so awareness, behavior, and culture. How do you help people behave more securely, but more importantly, and this is the key bit for us, how do you use science and data to optimize that process? To date, our industry has really focused on training, phishing simulations, and the truth is very those things don't reduce risk, so we're laser focused on that, and our software platform uses the data to optimize over time so the interventions are more effective, it remembers and learns about individuals so we can find information at the right time, and it helps predict the future. So we represent risk and we represent the likely threats that organizations are gonna face on the basis of the data we collect. So it's a great journey. Um, it's an epic, um, at building a software company is huge fun. Yeah, absolutely. So your platform is designed, so I'm an end user, I work for XYZ um, a Corporation. I would subscribe, I suppose, on, a, on a, a yearly basis to you, and it's an ongoing evolution, always constantly training, always constantly, searching by right. data analytics yeah. for, for those users i mean not just training actually in fact to be honest training is a, is a really quite small part of of the uh of the the tools the interventions in, in the toolbox if you think about it uh actually our customers are organizations so they're security teams of organizations CISOs, information security managers or information yeah. security directors or uh, people who lead the um the human cyber risk effort awareness and culture leads behavior, behavior change leads so those are our customers, but their stakeholders and indeed the people that we support, of course, are users, the rest of the organization. So if you think about it, our job is to do help two groups of people make better decisions. It's to help the decision makers who need to think about risk make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And it's to help the people who use technology every day to do their everyday life make better decisions. That's the way we see it. So our software platform really provides interventions and support to users when they need it. Think about it, Josh, you, everybody listening here, we've all done training. We've all done training that's been okay, and we've all done training that's been absolutely terrible. When it comes to cybersecurity, we also need it to change behavior, and training doesn't change behavior. So our software platform, if you ask most people, what do you want, training or help? They'll say, give me some help. Why would I want training? Just give me some help. Yeah, yeah. So most people, um, actually, if you give them the ability to get the nudges they need at the right time, our software platform learns how you take information on and when to best provide you information. What's the best way to provide you the information? What's relevant for your role or your type of job or your context? What time to give you those nudges? Our software platform learns all that. And so actually, rather than just relying on training people and hoping they remember it when they've got a challenge, good example, being told to change your default password on your Wi-Fi router, if you're doing your training and you're either at work or not in a position to change that, that's no use to you. But being yeah. given that nudge to do so at the right time when you're at your Wi-Fi router 
much more likely. We see a 67% increase in people likely to take that behaviour. So we're obsessive about the evidence base. So research is a big part of what we do. We're also obsessive about the data. And of course, we use that for the interventions. So that's one group. And then as I said, really providing that report, providing that data, providing that insight. We do that to security professionals in a way that they haven't ever had before. Nice. Absolutely. Brilliant. So we all know you're very passionate about, I suppose, the evolution of or in the way that companies are adopting and addressing the human element of cyber risk, right? Yeah. Why, I suppose, my question is, why is that? What's your why? Why, why, why are you yeah. working so hard? Why are you doing 24 hours a day, Oz? What, what's the, yeah, what, what's, what's, what's the driver? <laughs> because I'm inefficient, my admin's so bad. Um, <laughs> my, driver, um, my driver really comes from a number of places, um, personal driver. So, you know, for us, we want to fundamentally change the way that society addresses this issue because we're increasingly digitized, we're increasingly connected, and we're increasingly interdependent, and technology sits at the heart of all of those changes. So cybersecurity, which if you were to look back 15 years ago, people saw it as a very separate thing to most people's lives, is at the heart of all of our lives, simply because technology is at the heart of all of our lives. If we can empower people, organizations, security professionals, and users, if we can empower them to be more secure or make better decisions, we significantly reduce the amount of bad stuff that happens to good people. That's why we do what we do. But we also believe that actually we've got to do it in an intelligent way. Intelligent way means looking at the evidence rather than guessing and hoping. An intelligent way means using the data rather than just assuming and compiling interventions. And actually we've learned that if we do that well, we actually deliver huge value. The other thing that we want to do is build a tech company that we can all be proud of as members of the CyberSafe tribe. What does it look like to build a tech company that gives a shit, excuse my language, gives, cares about things other than, <laughs> yeah. other than cybersecurity, uh, social injustice, the kind of the planet that we live on, uh, looking after people who are less fortunate than ourselves. For all of these things, it's super important for us. So we get to do the two things together. Super easy to get to be energized by that for me. Yeah, that's epic. That's awesome. Uh, and so then a look forward. You guys are growing at an unprecedented rate. Like you said, you've all been hunkered down for the last four months, really working hard, kicking on, and, and I'm sure you're going to be producing some amazing things uh, looking forward. What, is that, what, did you, what do you think the future looks like for cyber awareness, the human aspect that, let's be honest, not many people pay too much attention to because it's all about yeah. the technology, right? So what, what does that look like for, you, I suppose, you guys and how are you almost like the vehicle? I see, I see CyberSafe as a vehicle for that, right? And I'm sure I'm not the only one in, in the industry. So, uh, you know, I, I must confess one... I, you know, yeah, we are growing, um, and it's uh, we've had huge amounts of uh, good fortune and, and success in following that, which is really exciting. Um, but it's not unprecedented. You know, there are lots of great companies who are growing really quickly, and lots of tech companies going to do amazing stuff. So for us, we're really um, aware of the fact that we're just getting started on this journey, and we've got some really exciting things ahead of us. But the last few years have been extraordinary. Cybersecurity is changing in general. And security awareness within that, which is a bit of an umbrella term. Um, I heard somebody describe it the other day as a little bit like thinking about um, web developers or web designers about mm. eight, nine, ten, twelve years ago, where everyone, you know, people would say, "I'm a web designer." Now, actually, the term has evolved so that people are really explicit about what they do in that. I'm, uh, I'm focused yeah. on UX, I'm focused on UI, I'm focused on. Actually, security awareness is the umbrella term, and within that, actually. Those people who understand it well will realize that actually some people are behavior change experts. Some people are uh, data um, scientists who focus specifically on human cyber risk. Some people are communication experts. There's a, there's a whole plethora, but actually even the industry itself is only just waking up to this. Um, that's one of the big changes we're going to see in the space. The other one, as I've touched on already, is a better use of data and research evidence. And for me, this is the game changer for the industry. It's a game changer for the whole industry, cybersecurity in general, and particularly those that are focused on human cyber risk. It is a risk that has to be considered, and it has not been considered before because we haven't had the data. So we are obsessive about being part of the companies that push forward that use of data. And it's exciting stuff. It's really exciting stuff. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, I completely echo everything you say. And I, I think we are going to see it um, change and it is going to shift. And I think it's going to be not, not forced by COVID or, or by what's happening in terms of the pandemic, but it's just going to be enhanced and rapidly move, move, move towards where it will go anyway, but just quicker. Yeah. We talk about um, a thing called borderless security awareness. So um, that's, which is the move that we've seen, which some people will hear that and will think about, oh, remote, you know, not in the office. Actually, it's much broader than that. Borderless, where we're not constrained by 
not just for physical purposes or physical associations with people, not constrained by the old ways of doing things. Yeah. That's one of the things that's really exciting about security awareness now, where you say, actually, what does it look like to try to actually provide people support in the way that um, their, their social media platforms that they use provide them support? What does it mean to actually provide people help? What does it mean to join and create networks where people can support each other and the data can be used to help optimize our understanding of risk over time? What does that look like? That's what we describe as borderless security awareness. Yeah. Awesome, nice. Good term, borderless security awareness. So, okay, final last question I ask all of my guests. Oz, if you were not in cyber, away from your military career, what would you be doing? Put you on the spot here. Yeah, so I'm not <laughs> had to go back to being a paratrooper. Um, <laughs> you know what, I would, uh, uh, and this is more out of fun than anything else for me, um, I suspect I'd be doing something on a snowboard. Um, whether that's really? either instructing or competing. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of winter sports in general, and I'm, I'm okay on a snowboard, uh, good enough to get myself around a mountain or two. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I haven't quite mastered the art of doing my job on a board, bear in mind my job right now, but if I could find a way of doing it, uh, I would, and indeed we spend as much time as possible on snow as a family. So for me, that's a big piece. What about combining them both? I can see you on a Zoom call going down the mountain on a snowboard, right? Yeah. I can see <laughs> I'm probably precarious enough as it is. I'll fall off the lift. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oz, thank you very much for coming on. I hope it's been um, uh, well, a pleasure for you as it is, it is for me and all the uh, viewers. I know it's been very insightful, very inspiring. So continue doing what you guys do. Uh, it's awesome to see. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much. It's been brilliant talking to you. Thank you.